Good morning, I'm Sally Barker. Welcome to Local Business Focus. With me this morning is Wayne Curtis from Notions Design, proud station sponsor. Good morning, Wayne. Good morning. How are you? Good, thank you. Now, this morning we're talking about developing your visual brand awareness. Can you tell me a little bit about that statement? Okay, brand. Um, a lot of people have different ideas about brand and what it constitutes. Um, but we are talking about everything that the client sees or feels about a business. So that is the visual component, um, whether that be a logo, marketing collateral like brochures, online components, whether they're doing social media, their website. It is also how people respond and feel and how they get communicated to um, on the level that is, hey, I'm ringing you up and how your staff speak to those people. And then when that person walks away, how they feel about that business, how they feel about the experience. Um, but the visual component is a very uh, important component of that because normally that's where businesses start, and that is with a logo. Okay, so let's break that up into a few different sections then. We've got developing your visual brand. So we've got developing your, your brand, yes. but then developing the visual side of that brand. Yeah, because a lot of businesses will start with the logo and then they think, great, we've got the logo, we've got our brand all sorted. Well, it's, it's so much more than that. Oh, and obviously, there are businesses that don't have a lot of money to spend on taking it further. Um, but when you develop the visual brand, it goes from the logo and then it spills through to everything else. And that's colours, that's fonts, it's the way you use photographs. It may be um, a style of advert, it is everything that runs through your stationary items. It is the things, the colours, the style that run through your website and through your social media. And controlling that and making sure that it's continuous is a very important part of, of your visual brand. And you mentioned um, the way people within your business answer the phone. That's also part of your brand. Absolutely. Um, when someone communicates with your business and whether they get the right answer or not or whether they're getting the service they're asking for, uh, when they hang up and walk away and somebody asks them about their experience, is either going to be good or bad? That is your brand. And if people are getting bad feedback all the time, then that's reflecting badly on your brand and that's something that you have to do. So communication, as well as the visual side of it, is a very important part. It's the overall feeling. It's what people say about your business behind your back, basically. So how do you find what your brand really is, what you're really about? It's about understanding and getting a good brief um, and knowing what the client's trying to achieve with their business. Uh, so then that the, the logo, the communications around the logo, their marketing collateral is all on the same page, so to speak. It's in tune with what the client's trying to achieve. Okay, so what is... If someone's out there looking for a brand, are there some key brands they can look at that you can give an example of a good brand or a bad brand? Okay, so um, there's been many um, examples of, of brand, good brand management over the last 10 to 20 years. Um, some of the ones that are commonly referred to as Apple, obviously. Um, some of the bigger, older style companies like Shell, Coca-Cola, um, even Qantas. Um, these companies are on top of their brand at all times, 24 hours a day. They understand and they know that there's subtle shifts within the market and so their brand reflects that. They're always on top of the change, they're being fluid and understanding what their potential uh, clients want but also what their existing clientele want. It's very important. I think some businesses tend to be pushing forward all the time looking for the new business and bringing new client to them and they tend to forget their existing client and what they want and what they're still trying and what expecting out of the company. So, for instance, uh, Qantas has changed and gone through some tough times over the couple, a couple of years. Their logo and brand mark is always changing. It's very subtle, but it's changing uh, because that reflects that a company is moving and growing and constantly dynamic. If a company is reflecting that, then people feel uh, like them, they have more ownership in that business, in that brand, because they feel that that company is actually looking after them and staying on top of the changes that are always occurring in the marketplace. So is that the difference with those, you know, better branding examples you've just given us? Yep. Their brand changes. They don't go through a whole rebranding. Yeah. It, the, it obviously, it depends on the size of the company and, and their budget. Uh, rebranding can be a very expensive process. 
But the ones that do it well, um, they're constantly tweaking. They're not leaving it for 10 years and then going, bang, we have to change everything. That's when it's quite painful uh, in the back pocket. Uh, if you're smart and stay on top of it and make the little incremental changes along the way, it's very easy then to manage and control the changes uh, that a brand needs to take uh, in a market that's constantly changing. Um, so, you know, examples of bad uh, brand management are companies that just do that. They sit and wait and they're still working on brochures that are three and four years old. They've got a logo that's no longer in tune with their market because their market may have changed. The, uh, the age group of their market may have changed. So they then wait literally till the, the rock drops on their foot and then they go, oh, we need to make a change now. By then, a lot of times it's too late. They've lost market share. And also the process itself can become very expensive. Mm. So do you think that's probably why? It's because they've invested so much, you know, not just money, but personally into creating this brand that they don't want to. Join. Yes. Um, they feel that once the, they have created something, that it should be set in stone. Well, that's not the reality of life. If you look at the market uh, through marketing, through media, through social media, and what's happening now with technology, it is changing at a rate of knots. Every day there's new product, there's new apps to make our lives easy and whatever. And if a company is communicating to the people that are changing with and using those products, you need to stay on top of the game. Otherwise, you'll get left behind. Well, that's a really great closing tip there. Um, stay on top of the game. Yes. Don't think that things are stuck in stone. Yes, absolutely. Understand your market. Be, you have to be loyal to your existing clientele. You have to know what they want and why they're with you in the first place. But you also have to look at ways of being dynamic so that you can approach the new market and the ever-changing technology changes. Uh, you've got young people that are on top of everything. If they are your market, you have to be with them. If you don't, you will lose them and someone else will take them away. It's as simple as that. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us this morning on Local Business Focus. Wayne Curtis from Notions Design, proud station sponsor. Thank you.